What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. I'm gonna make a quick video today talking about the UCAT calculator because I think it's so important for saving time in the QR section and I think it'll help improve your scores a lot if you learn how to use it properly. Really quick before we start today's video, I wanna give a shout out to my two good friends, Ami and Teddy, who got me this Karma Medic branded sweater for my birthday. I really, really like it, so thank you very much. Also, this video is made in partnership with Medify. They're the online UCAT resource that I'm sure you've seen me use a hundred times by now. They have an online UCAT question bank with thousands of questions to help you guys practice for your UCAT exam. So if you guys are interested in learning more about Medify, you can check them out in the links down below. Okay, so talking about the UCAT calculator, I'm going to walk you guys through every single bit of it so that you know how to use it in its entirety. And hopefully it's going to save you a lot of time in the QR section. All right, so I'm going to pull up the calculator on my laptop and I'm going to screen record it so you guys can see what it is that I'm doing. Okay, so this is the UCAT calculator. It looks kind of similar to calculators that you might have used before, but it doesn't have nearly as many of the functions as we want, as, as many functions as we're used to. And so you have to get used to this sort of dumbed down version of a calculator. Anyways, it works in a lot of the same ways as another calculator, nine times nine is still 81, etc. But it has a couple of functions that I think are very, very useful for you to know if you're taking the UCAT exam. So the first thing that you have to know is how to use these three memory buttons up here. So what these buttons stand for is MRC stands for memory recall. So recalling what is in memory, memory minus subtract from what is in memory and memory plus, which is add to what is in memory. So let me give you guys an example. Let's say you're solving a UCAT question and I don't know, for some reason you have like 89 orange dogs and you have to multiply them by 536 dog walkers. And you end up with this number 47,704. Now, instead of taking your pen, going down and writing down this number while looking up and down in order to make sure that you've written down the correct thing, you can simply store this number in memory. And the way that you do that is that you click memory plus. So memory plus means add to memory. Since there's nothing in memory right now, we're gonna add all of this to memory. So memory plus, you'll see this little M appears over here in the corner, which lets you know that there is something stored in memory. So now I can clear this, I can do some other calculations like eight times six is 48, whatever, I can divide by 3.2. I can still use the calculator to do any other calculations that I would want to do. However, at any point I can now recall what is in memory by clicking this memory recall button. So if I click it, it will show me what is in memory, which is fantastic because I might have done a calculation and gotten some really long complicated number. And instead of taking the time to write that out, I could just store it in memory. So now let's say I wanna add or subtract something from this number. So let's say I wanna subtract 704 from this number. What I can do is after doing some other calculation, for example, I can say 704 and then I can click memory minus. So that means take 704 and subtract it from memory. So if I click memory minus and then we go do some other stuff, whatever, um, and then we go to recall what is in memory, you will see that it's now 47,000. So I removed 704 from memory. In a similar way, you can add to memory. So let's say we wanna add 53 to memory. You click 53 memory plus add to memory. And then if we hit memory recall, you can see that it's 47,053. So this is honestly invaluable when you're doing your UCAT exam. You can save so much time by saving numbers to memory and then recalling it and referring to it later instead of having to write everything down and do calculations one by one. And then also very importantly, if you wanna clear memory, if you wanna get rid of what is stored in memory, you hit memory minus and then memory recall. And you'll see that here in the top left corner, the M disappears. So let's say we had eight stored in memory. You'll see there's an M over here. Okay, if we recall it, there's an eight. If we wanna remove the eight from memory, you click memory minus and then memory recall. The M is gone and it's gone from memory. So please learn how to use these functions in order to solve questions in the QR section. It's gonna save you so much time and really you'll find it very, very valuable. Now these three buttons up here, the plus minus, the square root and the percentage, they work a little bit different than the graphic calculators that you might be used to, especially if you're doing the IB. On a graphic calculator, what I would normally be used to is saying the square root of 64 equals, and then I would expect to get eight. However, on this calculator, what you have to do is hit 64 and then the square root button. So it's like you're saying 64, what is the square root of that? And then it will give you eight. So you kind of have to do it backwards, if that makes sense. Also this button up here, plus minus, it just changes the sign of whatever number you have on the screen. So right now this number is positive eight. If you hit the minus, this number becomes negative eight. So if we do negative eight plus four, you'll get negative four, as you can see. So that's what this button does. And then the percentage button, this is useful if you wanna do, for example, 
Um, let's say you need to find out what is 75% of 100. Obviously, we know that that's 75, but just to make it a simple example, so what you can do is 100 times 75%, instead of writing out 100 times 0 0.75, which is what I would normally do. Okay, so that's all the buttons of the calculator. The second thing that can really help you save time when you're using this calculator is learning how to use the shortcuts. So the one that I found most useful for the calculator was using control C and that's what makes the calculator appear or disappear. Also, if you want to close the calculator, you don't have to click the little X that is on it. You can click anywhere on the screen and it will just disappear. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to say about using the calculator on the UCAT exam is please, please, please learn how to use the number pad on the rightmost side of the keyboard in order to input your numbers into the calculator. So yes, you can use your mouse to click on the numbers and yes, you can use the numbers at the top of the keyboard that are in a straight line, but both of these are going to take you significantly longer than if you learned how to use the number pad on the right. So yeah, if you can use the number pad, because honestly, that's just the fastest possible way to do it. If you find that to be a bit confusing, or it's too much trouble, then you can use the number pad to input the numbers and you can use the mouse in order to click the different functions. So multiplication, division, subtraction and addition. Okay, and I think that's everything that I can say about the UCAT calculator. Again, I want to emphasize how important it is to learn how to use those memory functions on the calculator, they're going to save you a lot of time when it comes exam day. I hope you guys have found this video useful. And if you have any questions for me, you can leave them in a comment down below. Make sure you like this video if you found it useful and subscribe to my channel if you want to see other medical school related content from me. Anyways, that is it for me and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!